Welcome back to Fox Recaps. Today, I'm going to explain two episodes from the series, A Series of Unfortunate Events, released in the year 2017. The series revolves around the three Baudelaire children, Violet, Klaus, and Sunny. Violet is the eldest child, and she has a real knack for inventing and building unusual devices, while Klaus is the middle child and the only boy. He likes wearing glasses to make himself look more intelligent than Violet. Last but not least is Sunny, who makes up for her lack of communication skills with the size and sharpness of her four teeth. They lived in an enormous mansion in the heart of the city until their parents perished in a fire that also destroyed their massive home. The authorities spent months on research to find the precise cause of the Baudelaire fire, but without success. The Baudelaire children were devastated, but their parents left behind an enormous fortune and a mysterious object that rings a very faint bell. Violet will inherit the Baudelaire estate when she comes of age. Until then, they will be placed under a proper guardian as decided by the executor of the Baudelaire estate, Mr. Poe, and bankers at Mulctuary Money Management. After a lot of deliberation, Mr. Poe and others choose a man named Count Olaf as the guardian of the Baudelaire children. Count Olaf is said to be the closest living relative of the family, but the children don't ever recall meeting him. Count Olaf is a self-proclaimed actor and lives in a dark and dilapidated mansion. It quickly becomes clear that he's after the children's massive inheritance. Klaus doesn't like Olaf from the get-go, especially the tattoo on his ankle, but Violet convinces him to compromise. Olaf talks rudely to them and makes them prepare dinner for his shady theater friends. Meanwhile, it is revealed that Mr. and Mrs. Baudelaire are not dead after all, and they are in Peru. Olaf forces Violet to play the role of his wife in his play, and tricks her into marrying her in front of Mr. Poe and others. However, Violet reveals that the marriage is not legal because she didn't sign the marriage certificate with her right hand. Exposed and afraid of getting arrested, Olaf and his accomplices run away. It is revealed that Olaf wasn't the closest living relative, in fact, he wasn't related to the Baudelaire family at all. Mr. Poe apologizes to the children for the mix-up and sends them to Dr. Montgomery, a longtime friend of Mr. and Mrs. Baudelaire. Enraged, Olaf kills Montgomery's assistant, Gustav, for assisting Mr. Poe in safely transporting the children. On a positive note, Dr. Montgomery lives in a luxurious villa and he welcomes the children with a freshly baked cake. Dr. Montgomery claims to have grown up with Mr. and Mrs. Baudelaire, but Violet and Klaus don't recall them ever talking about him. To prove himself, Dr. Montgomery shows them a picture of a piano and claims that he was locked inside it with Mr. and Mrs. Baudelaire. He also tells the children that he's a herpetologist and gives them a tour of his laboratory, which he calls the Reptile Room. The room gives off the false impression that it has been secured with a top-of-the-line security system, but in reality, it can be opened by just turning the doorknob. It contains all kinds of reptiles, including a new species of non-poisonous snake called the Deadly Viper, that Dr. Montgomery recently discovered and plans to present to the Herpetological Society. The room also contains an entire cabinet full of venom samples from some of the most venomous snakes known to man. Seeing the children being afraid of the animals, Dr. Montgomery tells them that a few dangerous reptiles can make them skeptical of the entire species, but if they give them a chance and get to know them well enough to tell the dangerous ones from the good, no harm will come to them from the reptile room. He promises to take them to the movies later before heading to town to run some errands. Violet and Klaus go through his books and find a blueprint of his landscaping which makes a labyrinth. Violet notes that from the top, it looks like the tattoo on Count Olaf's ankle. Shortly afterwards, Count Olaf shows up at the villa in disguise, pretending to be Dr. Montgomery's new assistant. Violet and Klaus take no time identifying him and try to lock him out, but he forces his way into the house with a knife. Olaf also confirms Dr. Montgomery's claims about the picture on the wall, revealing that he took the picture himself. He eventually corners the children, but Dr. Montgomery's cuckoo clock startles him, giving the children time to lock themselves in the reptile room. Soon, Dr. Montgomery arrives, but to the children's dismay, Olaf manages to trick him into believing that he's there to take the role of his new assistant. After sending Olaf to his room, Dr. Montgomery reveals he's well aware that Olaf's an imposter and convinces them to play along and feign ignorance. 
When alone, Klaus suggests calling the authorities, but Montgomery turns down the idea, as Olaf and his henchmen can easily overpower them before the cops can show up. Keeping up the ruse, Dr. Montgomery invites Olaf to the movies so they can keep an eye on him and plan their next step. Klaus gives his father's last remaining possession to Dr. Montgomery, and it turns out to be a monocular. Dr. Montgomery watches the movie through the monocular and discovers a secret message left behind by Mr. Baudelaire in it. The message asks Dr. Montgomery to take the children to Peru on the SS Prospero. Olaf catches up to Dr. Montgomery's deceit and orders his henchmen to take him out. To his surprise, the herpetologist manages to beat them and confronts Olaf outside the movie theater. However, it turns out, Dr. Montgomery is under the false impression that Olaf was sent by his rivals at the Herpetological Society. Underestimating the threat that Olaf poses to him and the children, Dr. Montgomery lets him go after confronting him at the theater. Before putting the kids to bed, Dr. Montgomery tells them about their voyage to Peru. Later, he notices the door of the reptile room strangely open and ventures into it. The next day, Violet and Klaus discover the dead body of their beloved Uncle Montgomery in the reptile room. Violet blames Olaf, who arrives shortly afterwards, but he denies his involvement, pointing to the snake bite marks on Monty's cheeks. Olaf then forces Violet and her siblings into his car at knife point to drive them to catch the ship to Peru. However, before they could leave, Mr. Poe shows up. The children tell Mr. Poe that Stefano is Olaf in disguise, but the latter shows Mr. Poe his tattooless ankle to prove that he's not Olaf. Olaf then seizes the children's passport from Mr. Poe that he brought on request of the late Montgomery. When Mr. Poe insists on waiting for the authorities to arrive before letting Stefano and the children go to Peru, one of Olaf's henchmen shows up, posing as a nurse. After performing a sham autopsy, the fake nurse declares that Dr. Monty died of snakebite, claiming to have found the venom of the deadly viper in the deceased's vein. Violet and Klaus tell Mr. Poe it's impossible to die from the bite of the deadly viper because it's a non-poisonous snake, and its name is a misnomer. But they can't prove it because the snake is missing from its cage. Nevertheless, to keep Mr. Poe from leaving with the children, Olaf declares a sham quarantine in the name of containing the spread of the poison of the deadly viper. Violet and Klaus again try to tell Mr. Poe that Stefano is Olaf, but the banker refuses to believe them without proof and sends them to their room. As Olaf's henchmen keep Mr. Poe distracted, Olaf follows the children to their room. However, when he gets to the room, he finds it empty. It is revealed that Klaus has sneaked into the reptile room while Violet has run outside to Olaf's car with Sonny. Klaus finds the message left by his parents to Monty in his notebook, while Violet breaks into Olaf's suitcase. Soon, Olaf gets to Violet, but everyone's suddenly forced to rush to the living room when the deadly viper surrounds baby Sonny. Mr. Poe and others panic, but Klaus calmly reads Monty's note, saying the deadly viper couldn't even hurt a fly, let alone a human. Violet then brings Olaf's suitcase, which contains an empty Mamba Du Mal venom sample bottle that he stole from Monty's venom sample cabinet, and a double-barrel syringe with which Olaf administered the poison into Monty's body, simulating the double puncture mark of a snake. Mr. Poe finally believes the children and asks to see Stefano's ankle again. This time, Mr. Poe wipes Stefano's ankle, revealing Olaf's infamous tattoo that had been covered by makeup. In the face of the damning evidence, Olaf reveals his identity, and he also comes clean about killing both Monty and his assistant, Gustav. Mr. Poe orders the police to arrest Olaf, and he finally learns that they are actually Olaf's henchmen. Olaf and his thugs seemingly have the upper hand, until the late Monty's reptiles untie and attack them. Afraid for their lives, Olaf and his goons run into the labyrinth. However, refusing to let them get away, Klaus and Violet closely follow them while Mr. Poe calls the police. The children almost corner Olaf, but he manages to escape using a secret exit. Upset, Klaus finally shows Violet the message their parents left for Monty and laments not getting to ask their uncle about it. He also reveals that Olaf stole the monocular, using which Monty decoded Mr. and Mrs. Baudelaire's message. Next, it's revealed that the statue in the center of the labyrinth is actually Mr. Poe's assistant, Jacqueline. She apologizes for failing to help Monty and promises the children to bring Olaf to justice. 
Seeing a similar monocular as Monty in her possession, the children figure out that she knows what's going on around them and bombard her with questions about Peru. Jacqueline says Peru has been compromised and tells them to find their fierce and formidable Aunt Josephine instead, saying she can keep them safe and tell them everything they need to know. Jacqueline then goes after Olaf while the children return back to Mr. Poe and ask him to take them to their Aunt Josephine. Mr. Poe agrees, and on their way to Josephine's place, the children ask Mr. Poe about their secretary, and the banker reveals that he hired her on the recommendation of Mr. and Mrs. Baudelaire. Following the trail of evidence left behind by Olaf, Jacqueline tracks him in the SS Prospero. She tries to apprehend him, but he manages to escape. However, Jacqueline manages to retrieve Monty's monocular. In the final scene, Mr. and Mrs. Baudelaire try to contact Monty all the way from Peru, unaware that he is no more. That was all from the video. I hope you liked it. Subscribe for more content like this and hit the like button to help us out. Also, leave a comment if you want us to recap your favorite movie. Until next time, take care.